Welcome to Trade Pro. In this video, I'm testing regular divergence on the histogram for 100 trades to see how effective it is. What I'll be doing is 100 tested trades using a fixed stop loss that does not move and then 100 trades with the stop loss moving to break even at one times the risk so i'll explain the exact strategy what i'm going to be testing get through the 100 tests and go over all the results at the end so just a quick shout out to my affiliate capitalize.ai before getting into things capitalize allows traders to easily create and automate their trading strategies and dollar cost averaging just by typing it all out in plain english no coding knowledge required. You can simulate, backtest, and deploy strategies all from your phone and all for free. If you're interested, check it out with my link in the description down below. Thank you. So now let's cover the exact strategy that I'll be testing in this video. First thing you're going to need is a 200 period exponential moving average to determine the trend direction and know which direction to be trading in. So if price is over the 200 period EMA, then I will only be looking for buy setups. And if price is below the 200 EMA, I will only be looking for sell setups. Then we'll be needing the histogram to actually find the divergence. And this is a standard MACD histogram. All I've done is get rid of the MACD and signal lines and then I'm left with the basic histogram. This has default settings on TradingView, okay? Now, an actual buy setup is given when price is over the 200 period EMA and a regular bullish divergence is spotted on the histogram. The entry signal is given by the next cross to the upside on the histogram. So as you can see here, price comes down and makes a lower high and lower low, but at the same time, we see the histogram making a higher low, which gives us a bullish divergence here. So with bullish divergence over the 200 EMA and then a cross up on the histogram for our entry signal, you can see that's why the entry is on this candle. The stop loss is going to be placed just below the swing low. So the lowest point before the cross up. And then I'm going to be targeting two times the risk. Okay. So that is going to be the standard setup for 100 tested trades. And then I will also be testing a method where the stop loss is moved to break even once the price has gone one times the risk in the favor of the trade. So we can see if moving the stop loss to break even at one times the risk like this, and then targeting two times the risk still is going to be more effective than just the standard one to two risk to reward ratio without moving the stop loss to break even. So let's cover a, another one for a short position. So it all makes sense before getting into the hundred tests. Here is a short setup. So as we can see, price is under the 200 period exponential moving average. Then price makes a higher high while the histogram makes a lower high and then crosses down. So you can see the divergence as price comes up here and histogram coming down, then crossing to the downside, giving us our entry signal for a short position on this candle. Once again, placing that stop loss just to that swing high and then targeting two times the risk. And of course, once again, just in case it didn't make sense the first time, I'll be testing this way where it has a static stop loss. And then I will also be testing 100 trades where the stop loss is moved to break even at one times the risk and then targeting still two times the risk. So we'll see if protecting your position by moving the stop loss to break even at one times risk is actually an effective method or if it's better to just leave it where it originally started. All right, so that's going to cover the actual strategy. It's quite simple. One thing to note is that I will be using the candle bodies and not the wicks to determine if there's a valid divergence or not. Okay, so let's get into the 100 tests and see the results at the end. All right, the results are in after the 200 back-tested trades, so let's check it out. This was tested on Bitcoin against the US dollar on a four hour time frame. The risk to reward ratio was one to two, as well as a one to two risk to reward ratio where I moved the stop loss to break even at one times the risk. 
So this took six and a half years of price data to find the 100 trade signals, which is pretty high up there. Um, if we compare it to the most recent video I made before this one, where I tested stochastic RSI regular divergence in nearly the exact same way as this, it only took about three and a half years for the stochastic RSI on the four hour time frame. So definitely a more sensitive indicator, the stochastic RSI that is, than the histogram. So I imagine a lot of people will gravitate towards the stochastic RSI just because it gives more signals and I know people like getting frequent signals. So let's move on to the results here and see the difference between moving the stop loss to break even and just having a static stop loss. Now, if we take a look here with the break even stop loss at one times the risk, there were 39 winning trades, there was 23 break even trades and 38 losing trades. So the gain on the account ended up being 40% if risking 1% of your account equity per trade, not compounding, which is a pretty good figure. Now with the static stop loss, just targeting a strict one to two risk to reward ratio, not moving the stop loss, there were 46 winning trades and 54 losing trades. The most losses in a row was four and the most wins in a row was five. The gain on the account, 38%. Also, of course, risking 1% of the equity per trade, not compounding. So it's essentially the same thing. The, the end result, the net profit figure ended up being just about the same for both tests. Some people may prefer moving the stop loss to break even just to feel better about the trade, but overall it seems as though the results don't actually change that much based on this one test, okay? Of course, if you do more testing, you may find something different, but just based on this one test, we see really not that much of a difference between moving the stop loss to break even at one times the risk and just leaving it where it originally is with a static stop loss. So um, whatever you find, if you find this information helpful, you know, then um, you can, you know, take away what you take away um, from this test. But anyway, what we'll do is pop it up onto the spreadsheet and see how it kind of compares to other tests and then we'll call it a day. All right, here it is on the strategy ranking spreadsheet. Fallen at sprout number 26, well, tying with number 22 and through 26, all at 40% gain on the account. Although with 6.5 years, I imagine people will gravitate towards these other tests with less time um, on lower time frames. Although out of 86 strategies tested, falling at spot number 26 isn't so bad. 40% gain on the account, kind of at that upper mid tier range of the strategy ranking spreadsheet. So definitely something that does work based on this test so that's pretty much it for this video um again you know check out my links in the description down below got a few affiliates got a patreon page and uh, if you're interested check it out but thanks for watching guys and have a great day